Hi, this is Jeremy Murphy, and I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm a uh, life coach, blogger, uh, running coach, um, and uh, formerly a very shy, introverted person. And I thought I'd talk to you about uh, how I uh, shrink my shyness and how you might be able to shrink yours. Um, it is, uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to um, eliminate shyness, and I'm not sure if it's a good idea to eliminate it entirely because uh, there are moments where we all need uh, introspection and uh, the ability to reflect on what we're doing. And that's powerfully helpful in uh, being able to move through life. But um, I'll just tell you my story briefly, and then I'll kind of go through a list of some shyness tips that I found from another source. And um, I don't know, I have a disagreement with at least... Uh, one of those uh, on the list and might have a couple others as I go through them. It just, uh, sometimes you need a little time to process them. But I, I uh, was very shy as a child. Um, I started playing the piano when I was four years old. And so some of my introspection came from that and that made me a little bit uh, introspective. Um, looks like we have, is it for him now wants to come in? I'll let you in here. Hey, hi. Hi there. How you doing? Hi. Thanks for joining us. Um, where, yeah, thank you. What What is your name? Can you tell us? Mark. Mark. Uh, good to meet you, Mark. My name is Jeremy Murphy. I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. Where are you from? Uh, outside of St. Okay. Louis. Cool. Louis, okay. Louis, Missouri. So not, not too far away, anyway. Um, I, no, not too far. I just heard you mention about playing the piano at four. Uh, and I, I think, uh, you know, that that was uh, related to some of my shyness. I found that I was spending all these hours uh, playing the piano, and that brought me um, more and more inside, and it made it more difficult to relate to others unless I was using uh, music in some respect. Um, and so my, you know, my piano music became the way of uh, communicating with others. And, uh, you know, this continued for years and it, it just got to the point where I realized I had to do something about it. I mean, I was in uh, social situations and I noticed some of the, uh, you know, some of uh, shyness, I think, is situational. If you're, uh, you know, if, if you're a kid and you're in junior high and you're at dance, I mean, that, and you're a sort of shy person, I mean, it's hard to ask someone uh, to dance with you to make that kind of uh, contact. Um, and if, yeah, it's very, and if you get uh, rejected or people start, uh, you know, making fun of your uh, shyness, then that, that makes you withdraw a little more. So, you know, it created kind of a wallflower effect. I, I found that I could kind of stick to the wall and maybe listen more. And, you know, you learn a lot by listening and, and the value of being a shy person. Part of that is you, you just, you absorb more because you're talking less. But I found if you're talking too little, then people don't understand who you are or what you're doing. And um, so I, I found that I, I finally needed to break out of that a little bit. So what I did is I started competing in um, um, uh, speech competitions in uh, junior high. And I found that I had some ability with that. And that gave me uh, some self-confidence. And so that helped me kind of break out of my shell a little bit. Um, and I finally, uh, you know, it, that became easier once, uh, you know, high school was still a very uh, shy point for me. And I mean, kids, kids gave me a hard time for being such a bookworm and, um, you know, for being intelligent and things like this. And, and that made it harder to relate to those people. So I just kind of isolated myself from them, um, you know, became more of a wallflower to some extent and then college was kind of a, an experience of going the opposite direction you know learning to right. engage in debates I, I became a philosophy major and was engaging in debates with people and serious metaphysical issues for you know just uh, uh, long long hours of the night and um, so that became uh, you know about the point where the the shyness shell started to crack and um you know, finally, I, I think by the point that I went to, uh, I went to law school and uh, became an attorney. And uh, that really, uh, you know, that uh, required me to come out of my shell even more because you're you're having to uh, 
argue in court and you have judges uh, bothering you with questions and things like that. And, and you've got to have an instant response. You've got to have a quick response and it's got to be the correct response and a right. properly founded legal response. So, uh, um, you know, that, that helped. And I, and I, um, you know, and I, and I imagine all them people, I didn't want to interrupt you. I imagine all them people who, uh, when you were in high school or college who made fun of you, uh, for always being in the books and everything, if they could see you now, they'd be like, wow, uh, maybe we shouldn't have been making fun of him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what they think now because I, I don't, you know, I still don't communicate with them. Um, I, you know, right, right. I, I'm, I'm a very, uh, you know, compassionate person, but if people are going to attack me and uh, bully me and things like that, especially if you're a kid growing up, I mean, you, you have to put up a, uh, um, defensive countermeasures and protect yourself from that type of thing. So um, I want to welcome uh, Chuck, who has joined us. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. You're welcome to jump in the seat if you'd like to, Chuck. Um, we're just talking about shyness today and how to, uh, how to shrink it and whether it's possible to eliminate it or not. I'm not sure it is, but I, I think uh, it is possible to shrink it. You know, and I would suggest things like, uh, you know, for me, the speech competitions help, you know, for adults, you know, things like Toastmasters maybe uh, might be a good idea. Um, the music actually helped me uh, become more self-confident. And, uh, you know, I found that even, you know, I decided that I would pursue singing also and, and so became pretty good at that. And so that uh, helped me overcome some of the shyness too and playing the violin also. And so, um, you know, as long as I made sure I was learning to uh, um, communicate with people through some, uh, um, you know, verbal communication too, but I, I found that I had to do that and I couldn't communicate everything through music, although there were points where I really wanted to. So, um, so those are a couple of things that I would suggest um, I know, uh, you know, anytime we're in a conversation, a lot of times it's hard to keep the ball in the air. And, and I think for shy people, it, we need to remember that each, each piece of a conversation is maybe just a phrase or whatever. And if we look at it as a, uh, you know, a tennis match or a ping pong match, you're just trying to keep the ball in the air. And, and I think if, if, we, if we do that and make a conscious uh, attempt to do that, um, you know, it is possible to work through a lot of the um, shyness issues that we might have and, um, you know, be able to learn to communicate in a uh, better manner. And, and sometimes just trying to extend a, a, a conversation and see how long you can stretch it as a shy person that, that's that's very valuable, um, especially if it's a productive conversation and someone is providing great value and, you know, things that you can do to uh, improve your life and things like that. That's that's really something that's helpful. So um, let's see. There's a, uh, um, a website that I found that has uh, 15 ways that they think you can conquer um, shyness. And again, I don't think you can conquer it entirely, but I, I think you can shrink it. <laughs> right. and, and if you can shrink it a little, I think you can shrink it a little more. And, you know, it's kind of an incremental thing. You take a big uh, helium balloon and you poke a little hole in it. Um, you know, it, it could deflate quickly or uh, uh, slowly, depending on how big that balloon is. But, um, um, but uh, you know, if, if you look at shyness as a bunch of bubbles and you're popping a couple of them, you know, some of the bubbles will start to dissipate and, and it just becomes uh, less of an issue. Um, but I think some of shyness is related to the, you know, a lot of shy people have a strong inner critic and we're very uh, perfectionistic. And so when people judge us for being less than perfect or we judge ourselves for being less than perfect, um, we find that we're, uh, um, you know, it just intensifies that self-doubt and we've to find ways to become more self-confident and uh, get our self-esteem up to a healthy level so that we can, you know, function at a um, more of an interactive level and less of a uh, isolationist uh, type of approach that a lot of uh, shy folks have. Um, but the uh, the first recommendation of this website, and I'll, I'll drop the link here shortly, um, 
but the first recommendation was to, to dump the image. Um, you know, we think about uh, shy people. If you tell yourself you're shy, your mind's going to reinforce that a little bit and it can become a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. And you're, uh, you know, th then it can intensify that, uh, um, that feeling and make it, uh, you know, persist longer. Um, if we cut against the grain of that and don't tell ourselves that and find things we can replace it with, and, you know, for example, I'm strong at this or I'm good at that, um, you know, uh, positive self-talk, I think that kind of gets it, that gets into the second one, you know, um, you can have uh, affirmations, positive self-talk. Some people advise that you do this in the mirror. You get in the mirror and you talk to yourself or you deliver speech. And part of uh, um, competing in a speech um, uh, competitions, I mean, sometimes if, if, if you're serious about wanting to do well in those, you're, you're practicing your speech in front of other people uh, so that it, the nervousness will be less when you uh, compete. Um, you're practicing in front of the mirror to see that your, uh, um, you know, that your facial expressions are correct and that your hand uh, gestures make sense. And um, well, I have some Italian descent, so I talk with my hands a lot, <laughs> and I, I've got to be careful. Yeah, I, with that I do because, the same thing. Yeah, so some people that you know they just say, "Okay, you're," you know. In fact, my wife will catch me. And my my hands will make wild gestures now, and uh, you know knock over cups or uh, drinks, things like that. I, I guess I refer to that as uh, Murphy's Law. My last name is Murphy. And so, you know, it, if you're making wild hand gestures, things can go wrong. But, um, but I think we do have to ha uh, have some positive self-talk. Um, you know, some people believe in affirmations where you, you create or you find 25 to 50 affirmations that are all positive. I think they, they have to be positive or they're not going to work. Um, but to uh, repeat those and cycle through those periodically, it creates a positive mindset. And, you know, that can get to a point where it kind of creates a positive flow or spin in your brain. And, uh, you know, once you get those wheels turning, it, it's hard to break out of that unless you get attacked by negativity or something like that, which can happen. So watch out for that. Um, the third uh, recommendation from this website, uh, it's pickthebrain.com. I just, I was interested, I was brain. looking, yeah, pick the brain. <laughs> we talk about wanting to pick each other's brains and, you know, we want to pick the things that are positive and productive. But, um, you know, this one I disagree with. It, the recommendation is to forget visualization. And, I, you know, follow me here. I, I am a strong believer in uh, visualization that that's a big part of being positive is uh, walking through what could happen, seeing good things happen and trying to reinforce that those are the things that can happen. Um, but, I, you know, why would you want to forget about that? This is a very powerful way to, uh, um, you know, have a positive impact on uh, um affecting your mindset. Why? I don't understand why you would uh, let go of that. So that, that recommendation, I would recommend, you know, I would recommend the complete opposite. I would, I would visualize what you want to occur and to visualize it constantly, as long as it's a healthy, positive, productive uh, thing that you're seeking and goals, things of that nature. Um, so uh, I- Hey, Jeremy. As, yes. I was going to say, I'm really enjoying your, uh, your talk. That's very interesting. I'm going to check all them uh, sites. Okay. Are you going to put them on Twitter? Um, I'll you, I, I can tweet it also, but I will drop the link. I'll start typing it in so I don't forget to do that. Um, I'll I'm going to the reason why I'm going to, I'm going to have to run, sure. but it was a pleasure meeting you and listening you to you. You have a wealth of information. Sure. Happy to help. Take care. Good to meet you. And, uh, All right. I'm on Twitter, music for him now. I'm on Periscope or whatever. But okay. it was my pleasure coming in today. Sounds good. We'll look for you and we'll connect. Thanks. Okay. Thank okay. you. Bye. Yeah, it looks like Chuck, thank you. I, I uh, was about to type the link in and you beat me to it. So thank you very much. Um, and again, I, I'm not... I'm not saying you want to adopt all of these. In fact, the third one, I, I strongly disagree with the third one. Um, the, the fourth one, the fourth recommendation I love, it, it's prepare. And this goes back to the Boy Scout motto, be prepared. Um, 
you know, preparation is the key to success in anything that we do. And, and if we do prepare ourselves uh, mentally and physically for the challenges we face, especially mentally, I think we're going to find a better uh, positive outcome. So um, if we can prepare for things, if we're, you know, if you're going to a cocktail party and there are certain people, you know, you, you know, you may want to be aware of that, but you want to try to meet some new people too. And I, I think that's the thing that helps people break out of shyness is, is reaching outside of our comfort zone. And I think we, I would stretch the prepare to, you know, prepare to break out of your comfort zone entirely and um, leave that behind you because it's just not, you know, it's not productive to really have one. So, um, so preparation is number four. Um, number five is don't fight your feelings. This is a tough one. <laughs> I, I'm a very uh, uh, sensitive person. Some would say hypersensitive. That would mainly be my family. Um, so, uh, um, but uh, let's see, I'm gonna let Chuck in. And uh, let's see, oh, Ben wanted to come in and, did Ben, oh, there you are, Ben. Hey, Chuck, can you hear me? Hey, man. I'm, I can. I just I didn't want you to be all alone in your. Uh... <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Ben. Okay. Um, I would like to say first things first. Well done for doing this stream. Sure. Thank Second you. thing, I have a question. Sure. How old do you think I look? How do we think you look? How, how old? old? How, how old do you? I, okay. Uh. Gosh, I'm I'm terrible. I can only see yours. I'm ter and, and it's kind of dark too. So uh, I don't know. I I'm Photo. gonna guess. Oh, we have light. Okay. Um, because I'm sick of people saying I look younger. I'm gonna guess uh, twenty. Thirty-two. <laughs> Thank you. No, but besides, there you go. Eighteen. Okay. Well, I it's thought you really. Looked, uh, I thought you looked. It's mature. really annoying. People, every time I go into a stream, people keep saying I'm like twelve. What? Me too. <laughs> you too. Me too. Yeah. Well, let's say they think I'm twenty as well. See there, here. here. How do 20, you like 25, 30, 35, like 40. Okay, and it still goes beyond oh, that. So. Don't talk about the receding hairline. I don't even want to think about that yet. <laughs> you I like my new good. iPad? Yeah, that's cool. I just got it today. Good. Ben, do you have issues with shyness? Mm, sort of. Well, Jeremy was talking about the fifth, what is it, 15 tips anyone can use to overcome shyness. So. Right. And one of them that you need to disregard, I think, that one of them said uh, to forget Visualize. visualization. And I, I strongly disagree with that. So I, you know, we could have a whole blab on, on whether people agree with that or not. But yeah, we're on the um, don't fight your feelings part. And I've had to learn to rein some of my feelings in, um, anger in particular. But, um, but others too, you know, just keeping your emotions in check and, um, but trying to be in touch with your feelings and, and trying to not fight them when they're healthy. Hold on. Da, 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 da. I'm changing headphones. Okay. Let's keep These talking. Look okay. Way too big. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Number six. Uh, feel for others. Uh, have compassion for them and their situations or challenges. Um, oh, I should have had him mute himself until he changed the headphones. But I think you uh, can mute him, can't you? Oh, I think I, I think I can. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. I'm back. All right. Good. Hey, uh, Ben. Where are you from? I didn't ask you that. Um, I'm from the UK. Okay. Um, you like close to London or whereabouts? Um, Newcastle. Newcastle. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, mm -hmm. Chuck, where are you from? I can't remember. North Carolina. North Carolina. Charlotte. Okay. Wow. I'm in are you serious? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. 
I've been to Lincoln, Nebraska. Have you? Jeremy. I love Nebraska. Several times. Wow. That's, uh, I think it's quite been the accomplishment. I've been in North Carolina huh? once. <laughs> And it's and it weird wasn't. that people say that. Usually they'll say, hey, I've been to Omaha, but I haven't been to Lincoln. So, oh, no, I've been, I've been to Lincoln uh, okay. several times. Cool. Have you guys um, tried Periscope yet? Yes. Yes. It's I'm amazing, on right? You should have seen me on Periscope like three days ago. Okay. What, uh, what did you talk about on Periscope three days ago? Basically, there was like, 300 people in the Periscope, and I was... In your stream? Was, yeah, seriously. What, watch, bro. how did you do that? Easy, I was just making some funny things, like music okay. and stuff. Hmm. And the easy way to get, like, loads of people is keep them entertained and stuff. Mm-hmm. Have you... Let me entertain you. <laughs> okay, um, Ben, we were, we're trying to get back to the topic of uh, okay. overcoming was... shyness. Have you, have you had issues with shyness? Chuck asked you that a little bit ago. Basically, yeah. Okay. And uh, um, how, long have, how long have you dealt with shyness? All my life. All your basically. life? What, what what have you done to uh, to deal with it? I mean, it sounds like you're you're on Periscope. So are, you, are you live streaming to try to uh, deal with some of it? I, I hadn't really yeah. thought of that. But okay, have have you done much on Blab, or is this the first Blab you? Um, been I've on? been on Blab, but there's only certain people who I go on to. Okay, but they aren't on Blab anymore, so. Mm-hmm. It's basically complicated. Mm-hmm. What about you? Well, I, I've tried to deal with it with, uh, you know, um, uh, public speaking, um, you know, just forcing myself yeah. to interact with people, even when it's uncomfortable, trying to, you know, break out of my comfort zone. You know, there's always... Uh, you know, some people re- require professional help to break out of this, too. Um, it, it just kind of depends on, uh, you know, sometimes it'll go to uh, an anxiety disorder or uh, mm-hmm. obsessive compulsive disorder or something like that. And sometimes it's completely unrelated to that. So um, I don't know. It, it just, you know, it depends on the individual. But for me, I I've, I've just try to interact with people more and find more ways to do that but I, I you know you brought up periscope i think that's a good uh you know that's a good platform to explore it it, it definitely pulls mm-hmm. you out of your uh, comfort zone pretty quickly so good well it's good to hear that you're using that platform and uh sounds like you have an audience for your uh you know mm-hmm. viewers and listeners to uh what you're talking about and doing good yeah um, I'm just gonna write something in the comment below, okay. and All right. basically, it might help you guys out. It okay. might not. Sounds good. Let's get to number uh, seven on the list is uh, partner up. Um, you know, it helps to have a, a close friend or confidant to work through these issues. Um, you know, I know my my wife, for example, if she thinks I'm being too introspective at a party, she'll she's more extroverted than I am, and she'll kind of nudge me and tell me that. Um, but I I used to be an introvert. I used to be you know INTJ personality type, and over time I've I've moved towards being an extrovert, and you know maybe ambivert is more accurate because there are moments where I fall back into introspection. But it, it's helpful to have. Friends friends or family members that can help you realize, mm-hmm. you know, you're going into your shell, you know, can you, can you interact with us a little more? You, we need to have a little more feedback and that type of thing. So, um, okay. We see your comment here, Ben. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, that is helpful to just try to strike up conversation conversations with people with uh, mm-hmm. complete strangers and sometimes those people really need people to listen to them too and it, it's you know sometimes there'll mm-hmm. be people that are uh, lonely or um 
elderly or disabled um, or, yeah. or shy like like uh, you know like some of us so um, so yeah that's a good suggestion um, mm -hmm. number eight on the list is uh, forget trying to make friends um, True. I, I have some disagreement with this one I mean it, you, you don't want to force making friends but I, I think making friends helps you break out of your shyness a little bit um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, so I, you know this one I have some disagreement with too I, I would almost uh, just change it to make friends that, you know maybe try to mm -hmm. make one friend per day or something if, if you're I a shy person friend. yep I've just followed you well, thank you. I, I will. Uh, I'll follow you back here too. Thank you too. And sure. I'm gonna follow you too. Thanks, thank you. Cool. There you go. Um, let's see. Number nine on the list is uh, to remember names. You know, we meet people. It's easy as we get older to forget someone's name, and then we have to have a mnemonic or uh, um, have their name written down mm -hmm. somewhere, and uh, that can work and not work. Hold on, I'll just and, be back. Okay. In a minute. Okay. I'm gonna let's see if I can mute him because there was background noise before. I see him come back. When he comes back, I'll try to unmute his uh, stream here. Uh, number ten, mix and mingle. If you're at a cocktail party, you don't want to be the wallflower in the back of the corner. You want to um, get in there and uh, try to meet some people, but not put so much pressure on yourself that you're, uh, you know, making yourself more nervous. Um, but I, I think that's helpful, Dave. You, you find circles of people. You try to meet a couple people, move to another circle, and, and not just stay in the same place with the people that you already know, which I, I don't think there's, you know, we, we all fall into that mm -hmm. trap. We gravitate towards the people we know, and there's a magnetic attraction to them because we know them already. And it's more comfortable. Um, but we have to break out of that and try to rotate through that room a little bit. So I think that's a good recommendation. Um, number 11 on the list is uh, to practice. You know, um, there's a saying that practice makes perfect. Um, I, I'm not sure that that's entirely accurate. I know as musicians, we try to practice to make it as per perfect as possible and not play the wrong notes. Um, and we try to do that, you know, we're delivering speeches and things like that. But definitely mm -hmm. practicing what you're going to say at a cocktail party or what topics you're going to um, talk about. You know, I mean, it could be anything. It could be, you know, occupation, talk about your dog, talk about your uh, your family, your friends, your hobbies, your interests. Um, the greatest thing that happened to you today, um, tell me a funny joke. I mean, you could have a, you know, a list of 20 things to talk about. So it's like Ben is, I don't know if we lost him or if you, maybe he's having some video trouble or something. The distance that might um, be yeah, it's got less yeah. connection. Okay. okay, sorry about that. I know we've uh, Blam's been having this problem the past couple of days. People have just randomly lost connections, and from here mm -hmm. to the Europe and all over the place. So maybe that's what the issue is. Um, number twelve is body language. You know, it. Th this is a good one because I, you know, if you have a closed posture and you have your arms crossed and. You're you're not making eye contact and things like that. I mean, you're, you're going to make people uh, back away from you. They're not going to want to interact with you. And if, if you're connecting with them visually and you're looking them in the eyes without staring at them too much, I mean, you don't want to stare at someone too much. You make them uncomfortable. Um, but if you look at them periodically and acknowledge what they're saying and, um, you know, sometimes nodding and affirmation helps as long as you – you know, not doing the <laughs> bobblehead thing. I mean, he's got it. Do it he's got much. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, uh, um, so, some of my friends bobble too much and, uh, you know, you almost start to worry about the bobblehead effect. But I, you know, having an open posture, you know, standing up a little straighter and that type of thing, that, that's something to think about. Um, number 13 on the list, I'm not sure there's much value to this one, but it, it was dress up. I guess, you know, it, if, if don't you, take your shirt off yeah I, I mean if you look uh, presentable people might be more willing to connect with you possibly so uh that's that one um number 14 is a, a good one and as an asthmatic this is a big one to me uh, you know when we get nervous we have uh, um 
we breathe more shallowly yeah. and, uh, you know, we forget to breathe as we're supposed to. And so, uh, you know, taking deeper breaths. There is fireworks. You have oh. fireworks outside? Yeah, I have to say okay. I'm, I'm going to go out. <laughs> okay. Ben, maybe we should let you go. That that almost... Oh, I can hear him now. Why the hell are they... She's celebrating something. They're behind the house. <laughs> Where are these fireworks coming from? Now they've gone. Okay, I'm going to get to the last thing in the list so I can make sure we get through the list. It's uh, uh, number 15 is notice the absence of physical pain. Um, you know, once you break out of shyness a little bit, you, uh, yeah, I think you might have to, um, I just, I don't know what he's, what he's doing. Uh, number 15 is notice the absence of uh, physical pain. If you're, uh, noticing that you're feeling comfortable in a social situation, you keep the momentum going. You just, uh, you know, you keep flowing with it. If we can achieve that flow state in an interactive sense, I think, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to break out of the uh, shyness. And, um, you know, again, I'm not sure we can break out of it entirely, but I, I think it's helpful to shrink it and keep shrinking it and keep shrinking it. And at some point you may uh, uh, realize that you're, you know, you become an extrovert as I did, which is unexpected, but I, that's just kind of the direction my life moved. So um, Chuck, have you, I, I don't think you've had issues with shyness. Have you? Have maybe you've had patients that have though. Uh, medicine has certainly. I mean, you're forced by virtue of your job. I was an introvert. I wouldn't necessarily say I was shy. Okay. Although you know, there's there's I think shyness or bashfulness. I think there's some emotional components and and there's also physical components as well. I mm -hmm. would I would guess so. Th those have some. So I was. Once I got to know somebody, like a lot of people, once you feel a little more relaxed and, and less uh, less pressure in the situation, I got a lot more vocal. But I was somebody who wouldn't approach someone, you know, in public and just start a conversation with. I would really keep yeah. to myself. I'm a little bit different now because I got a little older and a little wiser and realized that, sure. you know, that isn't going to hurt me. Yeah. And... So that became an important part of it. Yeah, you know, so the, um, people, uh, a, a lot of us with our uh, life path, we, we start becoming the intuitive ones, noticing people that need our help. And I know as an attorney, I've had to do that, you know, look for, um, you know, the clients seem to be struggling the most or whatever. And so, I mean, that's some of what I you know, when you start relying on that, then you do find that you're the person that is reaching out to someone, you know, when you just sense something is wrong and you can't put your finger on it. And um, I don't know, I, I that's, I, you know, we all have situations where we have to. I mean, you have, you, you learn, you learn some empathy and you learn to understand other people's emotions and that we're all not so dissimilar. You know, we have dissimilar situations, but uh, we're very similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of similarities, but the details, the devil's in the details. So there's a lot of right. dissimilarities. I wrote something down on my board. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you know, sometimes this uh, Ben, sometimes it's good to, you know, when you're learning to swim, do you just dive in the pool? Some people say, oh, just dive in and swim. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people that say, you know, stick your, you know, stick your big toe in first and check the temperature and, and slowly make your way in one step at a time. Yeah. So there's different different uh, ways of going about that. I know when my son was a teenager, they used to be really bashful mm -hmm. and uh, him and, his, and, and they worry about girls and things like that. So they designed this thing where they took a video camera and they, we called it Operation Rejection. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to girls if you have the guts to do it and you're gonna ask them what's their best way to reject a boy. And so what ends up happening is, is they find out quickly that they don't, there's like number 15 says, there's no physical pain involved with yeah. it. And it really isn't all that bad. And, and really, you know, it is what you make of it, not, you know, the, the, the mechanics of the thing are just 
ridiculous. It's really what you make of it or don't make of it. And it, and it helped him a lot. I mean, he's still a pretty uh, introverted guy for the most part, but he's mm-hmm. very personable once you talk to him, even for, you know, he's 20. So I mean, you, cool. you, you learn to be this day and age, you get a little more, a lot more social in college and high school. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. It's interesting to go through those stages of life, especially as a kid, you get uncomfortable in social situations. And it seems like some of that is just, you know, passing through to age 20. And it seems like there's, then it, I don't know, for a lot of people, you just become more comfortable at that age. I, I can't really explain it. For others, you know, I, there are people with, I want to recognize there are people with uh, uh, anxiety disorders, mental illness, and other things that intersect with this. And, and if that's a situation, it just becomes much more complicated. So, um, Chuck, you froze up. I'm not sure what, you still there? Um, but I, you know, that's, you know, the, um, for those people, I, I think it's more difficult to uh, uh, work through this because you have to analyze whether that's part of their uh, um, illness or not. And um, I don't know, but I, I think the main thing is if we can seek to not be a silo or within a silo all the time and work with other people and be interactive and not isolate ourselves in this, you know, isolationist uh, attitude that I think a lot of shy people have, I think it's easier to break out of our shell and, uh, um, you know, move out of this and, uh, you know, conquer it either incrementally, as Chuck was saying, I, I've kind of been more of the incrementalist type of person. Um, but there have been moments where I've just said, forget this, I've got to see how far I can go with uh, being more extroverted and um, just, you know, watch other people that are extroverts that are skilled with talking to people and um, it, practice, 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 practice is a big part of it. Some some people would say, pretend you're someone yeah. you're not. Like act like you're right. in a different person's it, position. So you, right. Imagine somebody that's a famous person and put yourself in their shoes and just – and then your excuse is, yeah. well, I was just acting yep. like somebody else. Fake it till you make it. I, You know, it, it works with some things. It, it works with this yeah. a little bit, I think. But, I, you know, at some point you have to make that um, real and make it a real part of your internal – well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with what you were saying about, you know, your self-concept and what, you, you know, some people that have a lower self-esteem will, or a so, lower self-worth will be a little, little more hesitant True. and might take a little longer to, to, to figure out that, you know, sure. maybe I'm not so bad after all. What do you think about, uh, you were talking about positive, you're, you're a mm-hmm. believer in positive affirmations. So I, you know, that the thing being thing with like the secret, it's all you know, just think it, think it, think it, say it, say it, say it, and it'll become true. When does it? How do you go beyond? How do you think you go beyond just the positive affirmation stage well, into I, making changes, where things actually happen? I, I, I don't think if I say I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to yeah. be rich enough, I'll become rich. And there has oh, to absolutely. Be some action and and that's, the, that up. that's the flaw within this whole school of thought that you can't, I, I don't believe that you can just sit back and do affirmations and everything's going to be rosy. But I, you know, I, I, I think uh, we have to recognize that the, the affirmations can be part of this, but it, it's not the whole thing. I mean, we have to take, we have to figure out what are the one to three steps that I can take every day or, you know, Maybe I've got a busy day. I've got 10 things I've got to do today or or 20 and and I've got to get through them and I've got to take this step. And if I take this step today, I can take this step up here tomorrow and um, and just build on on that and uh, move upward. The the affirmations that they have to be realistic and they have to um, have to be somewhat tied to our personality. So some of them that I see, I I just feel like, oh, that's, you know, that that's maybe too. uh, I wouldn't say aspirational, but I, you know, you don't want to have as- affirmations up here and you're it's too big of a leap. You can't, if you get frustrated uh, if you can't get there right away. But I, I think, yeah. Well, I mean, sure. yeah, you're a runner. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to commit to a 
Yeah, I'm not going to commit to a yeah. marathon before the first well, 5K. You, yeah, but I, yeah, I'll give you an example, too. I, I was at Target yesterday, and I was at checkout, and they warned me, okay, our processor isn't working, so if we can't swipe your card, whatever, we'll give you the discount anyway. And so I'm thinking, well, this this has got to work. I mean, Target's a big company. The processor probably goes down. It's a Friday, you know. Right. Of course, it's going to go down. So, um you know, we run the transaction through and, and it, it went through and the clerk was surprised. And I said, see, you have to believe that you have to positively believe it's going to go through. And, that, and that's just, a, you know, that's kind of a simple, silly, basic thing. But I, you know, I mean, if, if you are expecting good things to happen, there are situations where they will. But there are situations where you're not ready for the big sure. things yet. And, you, and so, you know, patience can become a part of this too, you know, that you have to expect this smaller thing today and expect bigger things uh, down the road. So I, I think it has to be, you know, kind of incremental to build up to the mountain summit is how I would put it. Sure. And I, I think that, you know, positive affirmations, a lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. you're really just speaking to yourself. So I think that what you have to do is find a way to prove that you're moving in that direction. So in other words, you reassure yourself. So if you're making positive affirmations and you say, you know what, I'm going to work, then you say to yourself, hey, man, good job. Yeah. You're working towards that. And it, you kind of self-reinforce those affirmations. But again, oh, it requires absolutely. that yeah. movement and that action in, in, in the middle there. So, you know, hey, I want to run a marathon. I'm not going to be crazy. I'm just going to run a little bit, you know, you, you run that first mile, say, good job. You know, it's a long way off, but you're, you're making it there and you keep going and you keep reminding yourself. And of course, as we know, what is that D desire, decision, right. action and persistence? Yeah, you know, we can't be so petrified say. by fear that we fail to act. And I, I think that's a great point that you're making, that we can't sit right. back on the couch and just expect great things to happen. I mean, they might happen if we do that, but that's probably not going to get us very far. And life is short, so we need to, you know, we need to take the action that we're in today. So, sure. Were you on, uh, were you on with the, uh, I think you were on the other day with the, the, the guy from California who uh, didn't want to dig a hole. Ha was saying, I want to dig a hole two inches wide mm -hmm. and two miles deep. And the guy said, I want to dig a hole four miles wide and two inches. And he was, oh, he, boy, I tell you, he, he was, he seemed like the guy that wanted to sit on the yeah, couch well, and talk about it. And that's, you know, this is so I, tough. I, if people can't tell you what their dream is. And I think this is a great practice for shy people actually you know, summarize something in two minutes, get right to the point, focus. And, and he, you know, he was someone that unfortunately he couldn't do that. I mean, he has all these uh, great expectations, but they're all spread out. It's too broad an approach. Well, I, I could give you the, I could give you a couple of medical diagnoses for, uh, mm -hmm. for, for that type of thing. And, yeah. but, but I'm not well, going and to, I, again, you know, it might be, uh, he might be someone like me that, I mean, I'm I'm a recovering multitasker. I mean, I, I, I'm the type of person that I, I do have the 50 interests and I've had to force myself to get back to, okay, these are the three central things that I have to do. And if I can get to four and five, great. But I, I've had to buy into essentialism that Greg McEwen wrote about that I, I can't I can't focus on everything at once. And I, I don't think anyone can. We We think we can, but, you know, and there are simple things. Yeah, you can you know, eat and read at the same time. But I, I don't, you know, if you're ignoring your family because you're too hooked up to technology and things like that, you know, at that point you're, uh, you know, you're also becoming more introspective. And right. I mean, I think that affects, it leads you back to the shyness issue at times. So. So you, so you advocate, you know, setting a goal, like as far as your shyness goes, same type of thing. Set a goal and sure. go for that. That's how I would approach steps. it. And I, I think that's the easier way. Maybe not for everybody. I mean, some people, some people are bold and brave enough to to go the other route. And it, but it, you know, again, sometimes it's trial and error. Well, the whole idea behind being yeah. shy is that you're not bold and brave enough. But the thing about it is, is we we re, I mean, this list is a good list. But, you know, you, you think about like the compound effect, that book by Darren Hart, regardless of that, 
mini habits, you have to you have to take off a bite yes. that you can you can swallow. And so I think with shyness, you have to go in small steps and realize, you know, sure, I can read a list of 15 things, but if I'm yeah. shy, I'm not going to do all 15 things. I need to take step one and work on that for a couple of weeks. And when I've reassured myself that, yeah, I can do mm -hmm. that, then go to step two. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, a young fellow like you, you still got a lot of years of experience behind you in that shy mode. It's You're not going to get out of that mode quickly. You're not, you know, it, it's very few people that will have this you know, epiphany and monumental moment where all of a sudden they, you know, go from, you know, shy, shy person to yeah. uh, movie star or whatever it may happen to be that it is unaffected by, by, you know, crowds of thousands or, or, well, not, or even a cocktail party. Yeah. I'm glad you so brought that you up because I, that goal. I think, uh, you know, in the entertainment industry, I think a lot of people are breaking out of their shyness there not not entirely i mean some of them maybe still are uh, introspective but some of them i mean the coming the the amount of breaking the shell that's required to be a good actor on stage or in film i mean is is uh, extraordinary and i know that because i have an uncle that you know is an actor director um and such so um I think I think in into it's interesting. I bet you there are, are a fair number of people that have that are fairly yeah. famous that are still pretty shy because when you get in front of a large number of people, you mm -hmm. may actually it becomes impersonal at that point. So it's almost like I can't be hurt on a personal level because right. it's so impersonal with the numbers, as a, as opposed to being in a group where you might have five peers or you know my wife didn't like. The little group, my wife would be very shy because of the little groups of ladies that were all good buddies. And she didn't want to try to wedge her way in there because of, of the social ramifications or what they might think of her, you know, that external, external environment. And, but yet standing up in front of people on a microphone or on a yeah. stage, she wouldn't have. Yeah. What about kids with, with uh, like uh, Asperger's and uh, autism, they they seem you know I I don't know that I'd really classify it as uh, shyness, but there's definitely a lot of uh, social discomfort involved. And I, I have a couple. Well, I mean, I think I think that's a I, that's a disorder of you know there are definitely there's social. I mean, a big part of it is the social aspect of that, the social um, yeah discomfort or awkwardness becomes a part of it because the they don't really understand the, the 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 it might even be the empathy part of it where they don't get a whole lot of understanding of that person's uh, point of view and so they end up doing things that are socially socially not so appropriate it's the frontal the the mind manager sure. the frontal lobe things that uh, make you make mm -hmm. the appropriate social decisions yeah i i just we, I we have a couple of uh um i guess i have a couple of uh, nephews that have those disorders and you know we do what we can to make them com more comfortable in social situations and but it, it's so difficult because they're you know figuring out uh how to do it po in a positive manner in a productive manner without making them feel uncomfortable but still pushing them a little bit incrementally i mean that's uh it can be challenging so I uh, want to ask at this point if you have a question. If anyone has a question, be happy to take questions. Or if you'd like to jump into a seat, I know we have. Uh, I think Omar's still here and Yvonne. Um, and uh, yes. you know, otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to probably wrap this up shortly. Um, it's been a good discussion. We've had some uh, uh, fireworks in the UK to <laughs> pu punctuate this uh, blab in an unexpected exactly. way. I, you know. I, I don't know. It would be it would be nice for Yvonne to come in and join the. Oh no, thanks. Okay. Today, not today. Maybe another I time. Gotcha. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep us in well, mind. Well, uh, Chuck, I want to thank All you. Right, Do you Jeremy. have any closing thoughts, or uh, have you? No, I think this is. I think this is a. It's a good. Uh, it, it's a good topic. It's a good you know, good sure. primer for, for the, uh, for people. Cause I think, I think there's probably a lot of shy people that come yeah. in and lurk around on blab and are, are a little envious 
of how you know you how you you know how you see some folks get on here and they're just so verbose and and so comfortable. Well, I, yeah, I'm an you, attorney. No, you're not. You get, get on there and that, whether you get on there and just go. I, I, sometimes people have to cut me off. So. <laughs> Yeah, not very often, but uh, it's it's frequently folks will get on and 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 I'm envious of those that you can just roll and roll and roll along with it. Uh, certain people, not not a, not a lot of them. Some people are just yeah like true. to hear themselves talk, and and there are people that are they don't have a shyness problem, yeah. which which I'm envious of that. You know, they just that boldness that. You know what the you know they just throw caution to the wind and, yep. and and go for it. And and actually, I made a promise to myself that I would come on and join mm -hmm. more blabs, so that to get more comfortable. I mean, my thing. You talked about public speaking. My thing with public speaking is is I'm pretty good, except for I'm very nervous. You know, I'm, I'm always calculating as I'm going along because, and it really comes down to that judgment that's going on um out there and 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 I'm in toastmasters and I've I've been in toastmasters a while and it's helped quite a bit and I you said you had said I, I that didn't you, I thought did about it actually and then I realized uh you know I mean I've I've argued cases before the 8th circuit court of appeals in front of as many as you know 10 12 judges I mean that I mean that virtue yeah the virtue yeah. by virtue of your profession yeah, kind of, you you don't really need to you know you know how to set up you know right. how to set up an argument and a presentation. I'm going to say to Yvonne, thank you for the wonderful <laughs> comments. I want to give you some small yeah, I wish, compliments I wish and encouragement. You, uh, I wish uh, we could give you our props, shy. but we can't give you props from here. But I, I want to read your uh, comment into the record, though, because I think it's important. And I, I was going to mention this, and I appreciate you mentioning it, because it, it I think it's accurate here and might be a great closing thought for this blab. Um, Yvonne says, I believe giving compliments, encouragement slowly help shy people come out of their shell. And I, I completely agree. I, you know, we, we get so caught up in, uh, you know, talking about how great we are and things like that. We, we don't realize that we need to, uh, give other people positive reinforcement to allow them to, uh, meet their goals and to, you know, break out of this shell. So. Yeah, I think, I think acknowledgement of a you know a safe place or a safe even the micro mm -hmm. environment of where you're in with your high school or or, or uh, middle school students and then there's o omar who certainly <laughs> oh, is not bashful now i don't know i don't know maybe this <laughs> is the cover-up for the bashfulness you know or shyness <laughs> maybe you know but i see the more i do it the better i feel um there's two things um, well, actually, it's three things, and that's what happens when I get on. I, a bunch of stuff come in. I'm glad you mentioned that. I try to put everything together and sum it all up at one time, and I just go too fast, and nothing comes clear, you know? Mm -hmm. So here, you know, I'm going to relax a little bit. You know, I, I came on. I'm a little prepared. One question was dressing up. You know, for me to be dressed up, and maybe you can relate to that, because I'm sure when you went into the courtroom, you had your shirt and tie on yeah, and stuff, right? To. Yep. Uh -huh. You have to. Okay. Does that create more confidence for yourself, you know, to look professional and sound professional? I think it does. I, you know, I, I think there are moments where maybe you don't need to if you're not in the courtroom, but, I, you know, it, I, I kind of... Um, became a believer in, you know, you dress your best and you expect success. And I think those go hand in hand. I, I don't think that's always the case, though, because you have professions where people don't have to dress up. You know, you have, uh, you know, for example, now, now I'm a coach. And so I'm, you know, moving from a recovery lawyer to a coach, you have, uh, you know, you have different garb that is really required to be a coach, but you still want to you know, you still want to look acceptable and, uh, um, you know, positive and things like that. You don't want to be wearing your, you know, your oldest uh, workout clothes and things like that. I'm glad. I mean, that's not going to make a good impression. But uh, but I think dressing up does affect um, your self-confidence. I don't know that I'd really put it in a top 10 list of the 15, though. I, I think I'd maybe put it in a lower 
you know, the lower five. And I don't necessarily disagree with that one, but I, I think it does help. I'm not sure it helps with shyness. I think it goes more to being successful. Well, it, it, well it, would it help with confidence? What do you think about that, Chuck? Dressing up. About? Have it, would you? Will help with your, will, will yeah. help with your shyness? I, I think that putting on the uniform of someone that might get a little more respect or a little more notice uh, and maybe a little balance of the envy, you know, it be, can, can become actually can become a little bit intimidating towards the other person may actually get you make you more approachable to them or them more mm -hmm. approachable from you. I see. You know, I mean, if you're I mean, I, I tell you, uh, if someone dressed nicer than me comes up. I certainly feel like I need to open the door to them, you know, and, and I'm sure there are a small number of people that run the other way because they're overly intimidated. But for the most part, if you have a, a, a friend, a friendly, non, you know, intrusive facial expressions, you know, body language, I think that people will, will certainly open up to you. Uh, if you, if you dress a little nicer, I think that may, I do, I think it's right. Not necessarily. But, um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. The other question, uh, Jeremy, was uh, okay. So we know that we got blabbers and we got periscopers. Mm -hmm. Is there um, is something in that personality that would make a person want to go blab or a person go periscope? Is one more shyer than the other? Is there the are the people on say periscope? Um, are they more, uh, say, what could you say, narcissistic or more, um, you know, selfish or what? What's going on with that? What what type of personality types are that? Would that be more introverted type of person? Yeah, it really varies. I and I, well, the way I look at this, Omar, I mean, you have Meerkat out there too, and I, I unfortunately, I think Meerkat is dying. I, I wish it were not because there's some great stuff on there, and then there's some terrible stuff on there too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, the um, uh, Periscope is a is a tougher. I think it's a tougher inner. It's a tougher platform than Blab is. Blab just seems to be easier. If there's a uh, shorter learning curve. There are narcissistic people on, on Periscope, but there are people like that on Blab too. And they're, you know, nobody wants to really uh, interact with those people very much. And um, I don't know, usually they start losing followers or whatever, or, they've, or they attract similar folks. Um, but I, I think the thing I've noticed is that the more, the more content you produce on Blab, Periscope and Meerkat, it, it only reinforces your ability on, it kind of has a cross-platform effect. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're on all three platforms, I think it's actually advantageous. It just gives you more self-confidence. You know, I kind of look at Meerkat as kind of my training ground for Periscope. And, and Periscope, I, I'm still struggling with a little bit just because, I mean, if you're broadcasting and you have a message and you have people asking you questions and things like that. You have to remember who asked the question, what it was, because the question disappears. Um, and, I, you know, remembering who someone, what their name is, as opposed to their Twitter handle. I mean, that's it's tough. To, there are things you have to do on the fly and Periscope that you've got to do quickly. And so you've got to kind of learn who your followers are and learn to um, give them kudos if they show up and uh, reward you and, uh, you know, and, and try to, um, you know, uh, reward them by watching their scopes also. Um, so I, I think, you know, I, I think Periscope and Blab definitely have a, there's maybe a more powerful cross-platform help with that. But I, I think all of those help you break out of your uh, shyness. Now, there, there are very shy people on Periscope that will talk about that and talk about their um, issues with that and that type of thing. And, um you know, those are very popular scopes because I, I think that's something that we all either uh, either have had that in the past or we have it now or we have a family member or a close friend who has it that we're trying to help in some way. 
Mm -hmm. so, do you, um, you know, as recovering from a shy person, do you still have issues before you post the blab? I mean, do you ha have any issues? Do you get nervous when you when it's your time to do a show or you, you know, or is that like, have you overcome that yet? I think I've overcome that. I think the only time I really get nervous is if I haven't prepared um, for it enough. I mean, that's the I've realized the more video content you produce, how important the preparation aspect is. Mm -hmm. And if we're not preparing, I mean, you might as well just either cancel the show or, or delay it until you can, you know, mm -hmm. change the date until a date you can be ready for it. So oh, okay. yeah, I, I, I think a lot of that has vanished. You know, I, I've tried to work on being more conversational, like uh, Alex Kahn has suggested on Periscope. And mm -hmm. it seems like the more genuine and, authentic you are it, it just uh, that much easier you feel comfortable in your own skin it's easier to express that to others and it, and it resonates with them because they know that you're you're being real and you're not you know pretending to be someone else or pretending you know something that you don't or saying hey i'm an expert on this when you really you know you're maybe not an right. expert in anything maybe you're just an influencer and not an expert so okay Okay, so that's the key word that I need to hear. That's my takeaway. Preparation. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, that, that's preparation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. on especially on blab. I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna get on blab and have you know expert hashtags and things like that and you don't have that expertise, mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't be claiming that you do. I mean it just you know, people are gonna run from you and um, uh, you're just gonna lose you're gonna lose friends, family members. Uh, mm -hmm. followers, et cetera. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Like, like say for example, what you did today, you had your uh, format, you know, you had an article mm -hmm. and it was really good. I really enjoyed the show. Good. So thanks a thank lot. You. And I'm yeah, sure that I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to prepare a little more. Okay. You know, and, and I think I, I will be a little more confident when I, um, when I uh, dress up, I don't know, or, you know, a couple outfits or something. I want to look right, just like here. I'm normally at home kicking it early in the mornings, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, I really got to come forth with this uh, show, you know, and teach and stuff mm -hmm. about big coins and interview mm -hmm. the experts, you know, that type of thing. Sure. Yeah. They, you know, it, there's a, it, it's a fascinating topic and it's one I've wanted to learn more about. And I've, I've read some about it on the wall street journal and some other sources, but it's still, you know, it's a fascinating form of a, a currency. So, um, mm, look, yeah. look forward to learn more about it. Right. And see, that's one of the things, like, I don't know a lot about it, but I know enough. And so I'm learning more, but then I'm figuring like, I'm going to always be learning. This is really, really fascinating. But I feel an obligation to, um, or a mission and a purpose, like, wow, if I can get on Blab and I can bring these guys over, or if I can talk and teach about, like, really, they're calling it the seventh disruption now. Mm -hmm. The seventh disruption. So I'm going to prepare for uh, that type of subject, the seventh disruption, Okay. you know. Yep. Great. Hey, okay. uh, Omar, are, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a question here before we go. Uh, mm -hmm. Yvonne asked, uh, are you shy, Omar? Yeah. Are, are you really? Because I, I, I would agree with her. You, you don't, uh, you don't give that uh, impression on screen. I, I don't know how you, uh, you know, you, you give a completely opposite impression to us. You seem mm -hmm. very comfortable. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel comfortable here. You know, I, I would say that I was shy in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, I was shy in high school, so I'm pretty sure that it didn't go away. You know, I have taken Toastmasters and, Good. you know, it, it's kind of like some of the times you, the things you fear, you know, when you approach, uh, say like, here I am a tree climber, but I remember being scared of heights at one time. Yeah. You know, you kind of over, uh, you overdo it. You know, if one eye is put out your peripheral vision enhances you know so this yeah. is you know like kind of a cover up you know but really inside um you know i i think is mainly i'm not prepared i'm not i don't prepare or haven't prepared or i feel like i don't know enough to say like you know i'm not as smart as you i'm sure i wasn't as smart as you in high school you know so i look at the intelligence and 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 then I'm like, wow, I don't know how to speak like that. You know, I'm not as eloquent or articulated here, you know. So, you know, then, um, 
you know, did I say it right? Did I ask the right questions? Did I talk too fast? I have all these mm-hmm. voices going to make myself look really stupid, you know. But then, you know, like you say, like here, I'm more calmer now. You know, it's like you see yeah. me normally. I'm like, wow, I got so much to say that I can't, you know, get it all in. But, you know, with you, it's like, okay, I know Jeremy and, you know, it's a good subject. I want to participate. I know Chuck, you know, I've been around these guys. So I'm kind of more like, you know, but I get around the strangers, you know, I can forget my questions or get them tangled up and then mm-hmm. I feel bad. And then, then, you know, it's like when I come back on like this and say, well, you know, I was able to, you know, communicate there, you know, mm-hmm. with Jeremy. And so it depends on who I'm with and what's okay. going on. I tell you, Omar, I tell you what, I could take you and mm-hmm. turn you into a total absolute rock star because you have the things, you have the qualities that in the way you speak and express yourself, that a lot of people can't learn Thank or you. <laughs> their, their minds are in a place where they can't mm-hmm. figure that out. You can, listen, I'm a doctor. Mm-hmm. You could be a doctor. You just gotta, you just gotta get the breaks and, and work hard enough to get the information in. You can learn all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and, but you, you have the person, you know, I get you out. We go out on an operation rejection and uh, you know, we will go out you could probably do anything you want. I think I've seen you on here a bunch. I think you are a bit, you're a big thinker, big, you know, you think a lot, but I, one thing that would help you from my, in my opinion is sometimes you gotta slow it down for the other people, mm-hmm. not for you. Okay. Cause you might, you might turn them off by presenting too much information mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, say, all right, Omar, you say to yourself, you got a lot going on in there, but these people are going to turn off if you give them too much. Right. So you got to give them a bite at a time rather than mm-hmm. shoving the whole cake down their throat. Okay. And you could do amazing things. You, you, you've got that and you've got a nice settled, calm demeanor mm-hmm. and you got those eyes. You could probably do a lot of things if you focus, you know, just like we've always talked about focused, decide what you want. You know, if it's the Bitcoin revolution or whatever it is, mm-hmm. and uh, I know you're into Bitcoins and, and whatever it may happen to be, mm-hmm. you you can do it. Great. Yeah, you, 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 you've got a lot of great advantages in your personal style and demeanor mm-hmm. uh, where that you fill in the gaps. Hey, anybody can learn from the book. Yeah, I, I would add to that. Uh, Omar, you, you have a great voice. You have a great oh, yeah. resonance with your I voice that a lot of us don't have. I mean, we, we all have different voices and have different qualities. And, you know, I have more of the lawyerly uh, singing voice. My singing voice might be a little better than my speaking one. But yeah. you know, your, your voice, it, it draws listeners in. And, and mm. if you can find ways to package that with your shows, I, I think uh, I, I think you're going to connect. You're, you know, Man, it just takes time, just but I, I think you're going to connect. Yeah, wow. test in small, t- small tests, small mm-hmm. little bites, small little bites. You don't have to present the whole package; just small bites, and and and, and you'll do fine. You know, that's and that's what we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. in, when you were listening. Is mm-hmm. is just taking it step by step, going. You know, go two mm-hmm. inches wide and two miles deep. Don't mm-hmm. don't don't try to cover everything, and the shyness gets better, and you'll find you'll get more and more comfortable with it. And then you won't even need to have a nicer suit and get all dressed up. You'll just wow. be, you know, you'll just be that really nice guy, Omar. Wow. I think uh, after hearing that, man, I think I just got healed. Boy, I'm not shy no more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot. No, I really appreciate probably, it, guys. You probably are. You're probably the same as you were a few minutes ago. But, no. I, you know, Jeremy, I agree with, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I believe in what Jeremy, what I think Jeremy is doing here is, mm-hmm. is trying to open your eyes open everybody's eyes a little bit that Mm -hmm. there's a pathway out of this. Yes. And Mm -hmm. it is a path out, but it isn't jumping off. You know, it, 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 you'll just slowly chip away at it. And before you know it, you'll go, man, I remember two years ago, I didn't even want to step out of the house. I was always on blab, just talking Mm -hmm. to people from thousands of miles away because Mm -hmm. they couldn't get to me. Right. Um, Now look at me. Mm -hmm. you're Mm -hmm. You're the, you're the mayor or whatever it may happen to me. Yeah, yeah we got, don't want to be a hermit unless you actually mm, are a hermit. <laughs> right. No, I don't want to be, man. You know, I got a lot to share. 
But I, you know, I got what Chuck said. You know, break it in into small bit-sized pieces, and just be uh, okay with you know presenting what I know and what I got to say one bite at a time, and leave the rest, you know, until that time comes around. Instead of trying to get everything together at one time. Yeah, that's the answer. Yeah. Got it. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Watch it. Watch it. You're gonna see a change, I think. Good. All right. Peace. Cool. All right, right bud. Bye. Take care. All right. I, I think that's uh, I need to wrap up the show, Chuck. I got to go pick up my daughter from dance and let the dog back inside. And uh, but I, I hope this has been helpful. I, I know uh, shyness is a common uh, issue for a lot of us and some of us are still working through it. But I again, I don't think it can be conquered entirely. Maybe it can. I Maybe it can for some people. But e even if it can't, I think if we shrink it down to a manageable size, Still take advantage of introspection when it's appropriate, and uh, but move through it and uh, try to help others. Maybe most importantly, try to help others through it that we recognize are yeah. having issues with. Help them give themselves credit when they make those incremental steps. Yep. You know, you got to be able to give them the pat on the back to say, "Hey, you're doing better. You're doing better. You're doing better. Just keep working." Yep. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. All right, man. We're gonna stop the recording and end the show. But uh, have a great Saturday and have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, everybody. Bye.